Hi there, I'm Zach Bean, and this is the first Quick Lisp screencast. It's basically a demo of what I showed at uh, the Boston Lisp meeting last month, with a little bit extra thrown in. Uh, Quick Lisp, to start things off, is a system to make it easy to get started with common Lisp libraries. Uh, the main goals are to be easy, to be extensible, uh, in the sense that people can add things to Quick Lisp that uh, I don't anticipate, uh, and that they don't need to coordinate with me. Uh, and it's portable. It's meant to work on any common Lisp implementation on any platform, whether it's uh, Unix, uh, Mac, or Windows, or any other system that might run common Lisp. The goal is to run on common Lisp implementations, not just things that are a lot like Unix. All right, well, the first step is to uh, fetch and load the quick start file. Uh, I'm going to run that in SBCL. And I'm using Emacs here, but mainly just as a glorified terminal. Uh, I'm not using slime in any of these examples at the moment. So let's fetch the quick start file. We'll fire up SBCL and load it. Just one more step to get it started. This will fetch the rest of the bootstrap stuff, stuff and then uh, print a few messages about how to use it. You'll see there it says upgrading ASDF. Quick list will load a sufficiently recent ASDF if yours, the one bundled with your implementation, is not new enough. Or in the case of some implementations, uh, if ASDF isn't included at all. So let's load an example system here. Um, Let's pick one that usually has a lot of dependencies and is somewhat hard to load by hand. Uh, you saw there up here, it's fetching the index files, systems and releases. Those have some metadata about how uh, files, or rather systems, are related to each other and uh, in what release systems are defined. Um, all right, so there's actually a lot of different weblocks systems. We're just going to go with a straight weblocks. We'll do a quick load. And I'll add the prompt option just to slow it down, show you what it does. Uh, it's going to install 36 releases to get all the dependencies needed by weblocks. If you're doing this by hand, uh, it can be a huge pain. Even using something like CL build can uh, be kind of a headache just to make sure that you can get everything and that everything will build and run. If someone's site is down, you might be missing a dependency. If someone's uh, Git repo is down, you might run into trouble. Uh, Quick Lisp pulls everything into one central location and lets you uh, fetch it from there. So let's continue. There, it fetches all the dependencies, uh, all 36. It downloads everything with a uh, Lisp-based HTTP client. It unpacks everything with a Lisp-based uh, unzip system uh, written by Nathan Freud. And uh, after that, we'll load it with ASDF. All right, this actually takes a little while to compile. It's compiling here, and this is a lot less verbose than a normal comp uh, compile ses session. It um, hides a lot of it by setting the verbo verbosity levels with ASDF and compile file, and just prints a bunch of dots as the progress goes by. Um, the reason for that is I'd like Quick, quick Lisp to, to be used mainly for systems that are can be treated as sort of uh, black boxes that you can build on top of, but you're not necessarily digging into the guts of it. You don't need to see everything that happens as it compiles. Um, they're meant to be sort of a substrate that you can build your application on. This isn't for people who are trying to hack on the library ecosystem of Common Lisp in general. Um, it's meant more to be able to pull this stuff down and just plain use it. Uh, it will use things that it finds on your system. If you download um, a particular library 
uh, from its source control system. You can still use it with Quick Lisp. It doesn't try to take over your whole Lisp environment. It just makes it available, uh, makes things available that you might need. All right, so this is nearly done. It's just a few more packages. And again, um, being able to pull this stuff down from one central location has a pretty good advantage when uh, someone doesn't pay their hosting bill or pay their domain fee. Um, it can knock out a lot of functionality if it's something that's dependent on by a lot of systems. This is getting into the home stretch, compiling the weblocks stuff. Uh, and also at the moment, there will be an option to control how verbose things are. If you really do want to see everything fly by as it compiles, that will be an option. The default, I think, is going to be this sort of concise output. So let's start weblocks just to make sure that it works. All right, and fire it up in Safari. does take a moment to load here. But then it loads right up. Uh, that basically went from having no systems installed, having no uh, package system, no library management system, to downloading a library that requires 36 other libraries uh, in uh, not very long, uh, without a whole lot of effort. So that's one of the things that I'd like Quick Lisp to provide to anyone on any system is a quick way to get started. All right, now that's for something that is completely built into uh, Quick Lisp. All the libraries are within Quick Lisp. It's got everything you need. Um, let's try something a little bit different. Um, we'll quit uh, SBCL here. The um, I've, I've written an application here, a very small application called Vectu. Let's take a look at its system file. Uh, it's just one file. It depends on Hunchentoot and Vecto, but Vectu itself is not in Quick Lisp. Uh, let's fire up this. Let's just show the portability here of um, of Quick Lisp, and we're going to build Vectu in Lispworks instead of SPCL. So let's kill uh, the directory that it created for, uh, for managing the systems here and start it fresh with Lispworks. Okay, let's load the quick Lisp file. setup is pretty much the same. We need to run the uh, quick start function here. It's going to fetch the same stuff. And now it's set up. All right, let's switch to the vectoot directory. and do a quick load of Vectu. Now, we didn't do prompting here. Uh, this is a, a little quirk here of Lispworks, the, the demo I've got. Let's extend the stack so we can actually run the uh, unzipping program. I didn't do prompts here, so it's just going to rip through and fetch and load everything I need without uh, without too much prompting. In this case, it's probably about 13 systems that it's got to fetch and load. The way this works here is similar to how ASDF install works, in that it hooks the uh, 
component missing condition and uses that to um, find systems to download from QuickLisp's central, uh, central system. All right, now Vectute is loaded. Let's start it up. Uh, Vectute is a small application that uh, generates gradients on the fly. It uses uh, Vecto to generate the gradient and Hunch and Toot to act as the web front end for it. But it's a very simple uh, application that just generates some graphics on the fly based on the, uh, the location. All right, it gives us a URL to visit. So let's do that. And what it's done here is just done a, a ramp from blue to red based on the uh, top color, bottom color, and uh, the default sizes. So we can actually make this a little bit bigger by changing the width parameter to, say, 400. That's a 400 uh, pixel wide graphic. Let's make it a little taller. And there we go. We can change the colors, make it a little... Uh, a little prettier maybe. And uh, this is generated all on the fly uh, with a common Lisp program. It's all within Lispworks. Um, this demo would work equally well in SBCL or any other system that can run Hunch and Toot on uh, the Mac. There we go. Alright, so that's Lispworks. Uh, 